for joining along with my Sugar Shoot series, the editorial series I'm currently working on. Um, I'm Kathleen Luciel Photography, if you don't recognize the face. Maybe I look a little different with uh, my little belly here. Uh, but I wanted to dive in and talk about some of these Sugar Shoots. So let's go ahead and let's take a look right now. So in the lollipop shoot and in the cereal shoot, you'll see both of these shoots I used a technique where I kind of am bringing some color in to the photo. And um, I was actually inspired by another photographer, Cass Carlson. She's a really amazing photographer. Go give her a follow if you have a chance. Um, I love her work, but I saw that she kind of brought some color pops around where it's almost like filtered through. And I thought, how does she do that? How does she do that? And I sat down and I thought about it and I thought about it and I was like, gels, of course, because I love gels. So let me show you how I did this. So you can see here we have blue, pretty straightforward. I'm going to show you in two ways. So here in the webcam, I don't know if you can tell. Let me get a brighter color. So we got blue to match. So you can see the blue gel. When I bring it up, you can see brings it onto that part of the screen. So I want to show over here. You can see me, you can see the blue. Only blue closer, you can probably see it turns some of the things blue. Now when I come up to the camera, you're going to see kind of what it does. It's going to be out of focus more because of the lower aperture, which helps make it a softer color. That's a great way that you can bring color into a shot without having to put a gel on a speed light and use a speed light. I like to do a combination of them, which you can see in this set. So I want to show you how I went from straight out of camera to edited final image and actually go through and edit one of the images. I didn't edit here, one of these red ones. So. Right now we're looking at the straight out of camera and images and what I first want to highlight is right here where you can see in this image what I've done over here. So if you look at the speed light over here for the background, you can notice that actually in her makeup there's kind of two tones for purple, a pinky purple and a darker blue-ish purple. And so I incorporated that into the background by using my speed light over here aimed at it with two colored gels on it so it would create a gradient. You can better see that right here, where it goes blue to a mixed purple to a pinky. Um, so with that in mind, I know I'm going to have to make sure that I balance out those colors with the makeup so that they complement each other like they're supposed to. Um, you can really see that kind of coming into effect here. And Hannah is such a cute model. She did such a great job. Um, with the blue and the purples coming across and then I brought in a little bit of like a yellowy green because Fruit Loops has that like yellowy green um, either orange or green Fruit Loops involved with it so for cereal there you can see also some of the examples of where I had fun with um, the colored gel here so this one for example the colored gels are pretty vibrant so again I'm going to need to balance that with the makeup um, the skin tones and makeup on the individual and the background speed lights are going to be a little less vibrant than the colored gels because it's not as saturated. So again, I'll need to work on balancing that. But you can see practicing with that, practicing with motion and the light hitting things in a different way. So um, a better example right here, getting the light to hit the cereal, just having some fun. And that's the whole point is trying new things out, trying on the ground in different different gels, different colors, different positions. So the first um, one that I want to show you is going from this straight out of camera to edited final image. So first I'm going to come to Lightroom and you can actually see the image here and here. This is actually the final edited image from Photoshop and this is what we see in Lightroom. So if we look at a before and after, you can see a lot of the brightening that I did. Now notice the br blue brightens up as well, but there's blue that brightens up within the eyeshadow to kind of parallel that. 
um, and you can tell that we're still not making this so bright that it's that it's overwhelming. Um, so kind of an evening out, you can see I really took out a lot of the contrast there and brightened the whites and then increased the exposure, darkened the blacks. Um, so I took this then into Photoshop, which we can see here. This is Lightroom into Photoshop. First thing that I do is I always like to try to pull the hairline down a little bit, especially when I have high ponytails in certain angles. The lighting can just make it look like the hairline is pushed back a little more than what it really is. And hair, uh, Hannah has a beautiful hairline, beautiful bone structure, and I really want to make sure that was complimented. So you can see the change. I give a little bit more volume to her hair. I just bring that hairline down just a tad, and I darkened it there, actually, if you can tell. Um, just because, really, that's more of what it looks like in real life. So I wanted to highlight that. I can, you can see I've also done some skin retouching. So there's still texture left there in certain places. You can see I've gotten a lot better since the donut shoot in this one, um, where I still leave texture there, but I take out some of the unnecessary texture and smooth out in certain areas. And then I also just make sure to emphasize where the cheekbones are and emphasize the shadows down there. So. That's the initial part first, and then I go into working on some coloring. So I brighten everything up. You can see I brightened her and this color up a little bit there. I then wanted to make sure I brighten things up without brightening the blue a little bit more. So I did some curves to kind of pull out some of the shadows. Because in this shoot, I didn't want the shadows as deep or dark, and I did want a little bit more of a white bright. And then we adjust the vibrance. So the vibrance here is where you can see that kind of gradation in the blue and it being pulled into the makeup. So I really want to make sure it matched vibrance wise. It was a better gradient here and you can see that. So going from Lightroom to Photoshop finished image. So again, if we come straight out of camera to finished image, you can see it doesn't seem like that much has changed because really that much hasn't. It's just highlighting the right things. So, what I want to do now is I want to walk through and choose an image to edit with you guys. So I think a great image to choose would be one of these red ones since I haven't edited one of the red shots. And I really like this. I like the kind of dimension there. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to actually copy the settings that I have from another image. So synchronize. So I bring over the settings there. We can already see the huge difference of what I've done. So again, the settings I copied because I know I want it to be consistent. I want it a little brighter and I want it a little bit flatter. The shadow's a little bit softer. So now that we have that, I'm going to close that out and see what do I want to do from here. Is there anything else in Lightroom that I want to do? And honestly, I don't think there's anything else specifically in Lightroom that I'm going to do. I think I'm going to take this into Photoshop now. So let's edit this in Adobe Photoshop. So great, now that we're in Photoshop, this is where I'm going to get into some of the skin retouching, hair retouching, and um, balancing out of the colorization. So I'm going to make a copy first, and I'm going to go straight into kind of that skin retouching. So you can see in this one here, that's the first thing, move that, first thing that kind of happens here. Skin retouching. So how do I do that? Pretty easy. Use a combination of dodge and burn, um, patch tool, and frequency separation. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to patch tool. I'm going to just take some of the texture in the areas where we don't need as much texture. So definitely like right here, where it's just little textures of things that aren't necessary.
you can see now what I've done is I've gone in, I've cleaned up that texture in her face. I'm just going to grab a couple pieces of skin down here, just make sure they're clean as well. And it's really not about removing freckles, blemishes, things like that. The obvious blemishes I did remove, but it's more about removing the things. If you take a look here, let me grab the last part down here. If we take a look here again, it's really about the things that add a lot of unnecessary texture. So I want to leave the texture of her skin there, but the distracting things texture-wise don't need to be there. You can see she still has texture on her chin, but the distracting parts that were catching the light removed. And that's really where the biggest difference is, is what's being caught by the light, where's the lighting? So there's definitely improvements to the lighting I would make now that I've improved. The next thing that I want to do is I want to go and I want to remove any other types of distractions. So there's going to be a few kind of freckles that I'm going to remove because they're just kind of a little distracting in some areas. And I feel like I've grabbed most of those. Probably going to grab those ones there too. Um, You'll notice I removed over here a stray eyebrow hair. And the biggest thing that I want to remove is this hair right here. So let's go in and let's do that. Hair has been removed from that eye. So that's out of the way. You can see I've still left some of the texture here. Some of this I'm going to get with the dodge and burn technique. So let's go ahead and do a little bit of frequency separation here. And then I can do the dodge and burn technique that I normally do. So before I do any separating of color and texture, I have to check and make sure there's anything else that I want. I'm going to actually do a little bit of hair retouching because pulling out I realize some of that is really bothering me but I don't want to make it look too unnatural so just the hairs that are really kind of out of the way See, I've evened out some of the gradient there. The color texture has changed. If we come in to look at the hair, you can see some of those flyaways just taken away so they're a little less distracting. I think I need to pull in a little bit more over here as well. better there, much cleaner. Now we're going to go ahead and liquefy. So this is where I'm going to add some volume to the hair, um, bring the hairline down a little bit. We're going to make this bigger. So I always like to bring the hairline down just a tad. I want to highlight where her cheekbones are, so just emphasize those a little bit. Like I said, she has great bone structure. You don't need to change that. You're not changing, you're just emphasizing where it's already at. So I'm making the scrunchy and the hair look a little bit larger on top. Adding volume to her hair. I mean, really it just makes a huge difference. I want her shoulders to be just a tad more pronounced. So I'm just gonna bring that in a little bit. That out and that in just a tad so that she has a little bit more of a shape to her shoulders. So we're good there. Now what we can do is we can separate out texture and color. And if we put that together, you can now see I've got my texture and color layer. So now what I can do is I can go in dodge and burn to just get some of these shadows out. So let's go in and let's do that.
great. So I did just a little bit of that. You can actually go super in depth and do all the retouching that way. Um, it is time consuming, but that's probably the better way to do it. What I like to do from here now is I will just take areas where I want to even out the skin tone just a tad. So I try to go around freckles if possible, but here where I can see it's like a little bit yellowy along the peach and red of her skin. I'm going to go, I'm going to gauze and blur. You can see even just blurring it a little bit helps soften things there. So I do small amounts and I do small areas at a time. Great. So we've got a lot softer skin texture gradation. Now we can add in doing the eyes and fixing out some of these areas that still are just a little bit off color wise. So we'll put eyes here. Let's finish the skin first. So I'm going to come here and I'm just going to choose like areas like this where it's a lot darker. It seems like a different color. I'm going to grab a color around it, bring it down, make it a really soft brush with a really low opacity. And I'm typically going to take the color up a little bit brighter. So I can tell it's a little bit more of a blue tone to it. So I'm going to move it away and make it lighter. Help even that out so you can see just a little bit more even there. a lot of that evening out happening here. The last part is going to be evening out under the eyes before we move to the actual eyes. So I'm going to choose one of the brighter spots under the eyes, probably about there. I may even come up and make it a tad brighter. And what we're going to do is just come in a little bit and slowly add the brightness in to take away a little bit of the under eye circle. So you can see for comparison See how much it brings the eye up. So same thing here. Just helps it make it look less pronounced. So great, let's go in. Let's um, do a little bit of work on the eyes. So to really make them pop, I'm going to add some color in and some highlights. So starting with the highlights, I'm going to take the burn tool. Again, I'm going to turn this one up too. Um, I'm going to make this a lot smaller and a lot harder so that I can get right around the edges. I'm going to aim for the shadows here. Really big difference pop wise there. Last is going to be toning with the colors. So I want to bring over what I have with the colors here. To kind of see if, because I want to keep it still somewhat consistent. So you can see it brightens, it brings out the colors that I want, really pops the red, which I like. So that's exactly what I want to do toning wise. I do want to come back in here to color and I'm going to adjust the background a little bit, work with that. Still got some lovely texture on her face. Um, this area probably could be cleaned up a tiny bit more, but you can see we've brightened her eyes, we've brightened her skin in the right places. She's really standing out. 
If we really want to make things pop even more, we can dodge and uh, burn in certain areas. As you can see, there's a little more pop. And it looks like her face shape changed dramatically. It didn't really. It's just about the right lighting, hitting her and emphasizing the right places. And we brought the hairline down. So there you go. That's it. So if we look at Add a Lightroom to this, come back to straight out of camera compared to finished product. Thanks again for joining me on this set in our Sugar Editorial Series. If you want to see pa past sets from the Sugar Editorial Series, you can head to my website www.lucielphotography.com or check out my Instagram. My handle is Lucy Limoncello. That's L U C Y L I M O N C E L L O. Or you can search Lucy L Photography LLC. It'll bring that up too. Um, if you have any questions about anything that I've gone over in the video, feel free to reach out to me. I'm here to help. I want to help other people grow and feel passionate photography. If you're interested in a session or want to do any creative branding, feel free to reach out to me as well. Have a great day, you guys.